Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated. Inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us This season of Hands-On is all about living things. Learn about the animals and plants that share our environment through great projects. We've divided them into the same classifications used by scientists. First, we divide the animal kingdom by whether or not they have a backbone. Then we look at other characteristics like what they eat, where they live, and their body temperature. The groups we'll study are amphibians, birds, fish, mammals, and reptiles. For invertebrates, we'll divide them into insects, arachnids, and crustaceans and mollusks. For plants, we'll talk about the way we see and use plants in everyday life. Every project has five steps and five main ingredients, plus you'll want to keep basic supplies like scissors, markers, toothpicks, and rulers on hand. Remember, be creative, and let's learn about living things. Today's animal group is reptiles. The word reptile means to creep. This group of animals has dry, scaly skin, breathes air, and most lay eggs, though many snakes have live babies. They're also cold-blooded. Their body temperature changes with their environment. They have four short legs or no legs at all. Some examples are crocodiles, alligators, lizards, turtles, and snakes. First up, we have a stained glass snake. Use the pattern from his skin to contrast with the background. Then it's an alligator. His rough skin is created with an egg carton technique. Next, it's a clay turtle with a hidden surprise. And last up, learn how the chameleon changes color. Let's get started. Our first reptile today is this beautiful snake. Not only does he have an intricate color pattern on the snake, but we've created a stained glass effect behind him. Here's what you'll need. I've used a black mat, I have cardstock in three different colors or construction paper, transfer paper, and then I'm using markers that have a cutter inside, or you could use a marker and scissors. On my basics, I've got a disappearing glue stick, I have pencil, my scissors, and my ruler. So let's get started. The first thing we have is we've got our pattern, which is on the website, and I've printed it out, and then I'm going to go over it with um, a dark line or pencil just so I can see it. Then I'm going to take my first sheet of construction paper, and I've got yellow. I lay down my transfer paper, then lay my pattern on top, and then I'll take a pencil and trace around each of the edges. And when I trace along each edge, and you lift it up, you're going to see that I've got the pattern all traced underneath, and that way you'll be able to see it on your yellow paper. So I'll set that aside. Now the next step is, is that I'm using a marker that has a cutter inside, but before you press that cutter down, it just works as a marker. So I'm going to go by, go across all of the lines in my snake. What I want to do is create a kind of stained glass effect. And so stained glass usually has that letting in between, which is often black. So that's why I'm going around on these colors. So I transfer all the way around until I have a nice thick black line along the entire snake. And I've got one all completed here. Now the next step is, is I want to add my detail. And on the snake that I've chosen, you can do your research and pick your favorite snake. He has a black head, and then he's got a pattern of alternating yellow, black, and red sections. So I'm going to color in the black first, 
and I'm using the point of the marker and again I haven't activated that pen yet or the um, cutter yet and then I'm going to take my red and I'll do another section and I'd go around the entire snake until he kind of looks like this. So now I've got my pattern. Now the next thing I want to do is cut him out. To do that I'm going to activate the cutter. To activate the cutter I'm going to push it straight down at a 90 degree angle and pull it toward me. And the blade is now in place. You can see that cut. Then I'm going to go around the entire snake and what the neat thing is is because there's a marker and the blade I'm creating a thicker border. So if you can see there, I'm cutting across. So I'm going to go around the entire snake. Until I've cut him entirely out. You can see that. And I've got one that's all cut here. So now we've got our snake cut. Now the next thing I want to do is to take my ruler and my gold marker. Let's make sure that this is activated. So I've got my blade cutting through and I've taken my snake that's all cut out and I'm going to lay my ruler down at one inch increments which helps because I'm on a mat. I've already started cutting. I'll lay this down and go along the snake. I'll lift that up and then what I've done is I've made cuts right along so that it's into one inch increments. Now to make sure I keep my pieces I'm going to number them as I go along. I'll push that to the side and I've got my pieces here. So I've got number one, two and all the way across. Let's make sure I've got these all lined up. And let's turn that one the right direction. Okay, so these are, so my snake pieces are set up. Now the next thing I want to do is to take my paper and let me slide that up so I have a little bit more room to work. And I'm going to do the same thing and cut the stained glass effect. So what I've done is divide this into four rectangles and then divided each one. So this is an eight and a half by eleven. So half of eleven is five and a half. So I made a mark here. Eight and a half. Half of this is four and a quarter. And then I've made my cuts. And then I've also cut across here. So I'll cut one from angle to angle. And again, drawing at a 90 degree angle and pulling it towards me and that'll pop off. So now I have my border and I'd continue on with that. Then I'm going to take my green paper, take my glue and glue these back on, leaving that little bit of space. And of course you take the time to glue these nice and carefully so that they're all perfectly adhered and I'm using this disappearing ink so that none of my are disappearing glue so nothing shows. So I go back and if you, I have one here that's all done. Take this one, let's move that out of the way. And then I'm going to put my snake back down, putting the pieces in order, gluing them one down at a time and working all the way across. Once that's all completed, then I glue my mat on top and if you look at the finished one, then I have a finished snake with this beautiful stained glass effect. Our next project is an alligator and we're going to make it using paper mache, but our paper mache is going to come from a different source because we're going to use an egg carton. You can see over here our supplies are the uh, cardboard egg carton, we have paint in um, a brush form, we have glue, we have opaque markers, we also have a yellow cray uh, pencil crayon, to draw onto our black paper. We have scissors, um, rubber gloves, which are optional um, because it is kind of a messy project, and that's everything we're going to need. So if you go online, you can download our pattern, and the first step is to go ahead and trace, cut the pattern out and trace it onto a dark piece of cardstock. And you can see how nicely the yellow colored pencil shows up on the cardstock. Cut your piece out, and then you're going to set it onto your surface. Um, now I've gone ahead and I've put a piece of paper towel down on top of my surface. This is a little bit messy like I said. The next step is to take your cardboard egg carton and we're going to cut it into our sections. So the first section that we need is four of the egg cups all in one long row. So you 
can see you don't have to be very neat with your cutting, just chop it right out of there. We'll need that piece. And in addition to that one, we'll need a section with two. Put that aside. And then we'll also need a few of the little scraps. And those are what we're going to make our arms and legs out of for this alligator. Now the difference between an alligator and a crocodile is um, the rounded nose. An alligator has more of a rounded nose and a crocodile is more pointed. So if you wanted to make this into a crocodile, instead it would be an easy switch. So the next thing we're going to do is wet our egg carton. So I've got a bowl of water here. You can just run it under the sink. And you want to put it in the water for a couple of seconds and let it saturate. I'm going to do both of my pieces at once. And you can see how it changes color as it gets wet. And that's going to turn it into more of a paper mache. So the next thing we're going to do is just squish the cups right down. And actually, I'm going to wet mine a little bit more. There we go. OK, so we squish those cups right down. And we're going to make this and form it into the alligator's body. So if you put this right on top, we're going to start right behind the head and squish it and mold it. And this is kind of like the rough skin on the back of the alligator. And then you can see the tail I'm going to squish in quite a bit more. And after you've kind of got the basic form, take your glue and you want to apply a liberal amount right onto your template and then squish the egg carton into place. So you're going to repeat this step and do the little legs using the scraps that you cut. And this you would have to hold down for a little bit and maybe wet it a bit more and it'll squish up. And at home you can take some more time so that you can make sure you have a nice form for the body. For the head, you do kind of the same process but instead you squish the cups down. And this is going to make it so that your jaws open and close. So you can see that if I form this, I'm going to get a nice opening mouth. And that's going to go up here in front of the head part. Again, use your glue and place everything into place and let it all dry thoroughly. So once you've done that, you'll come back over and you're going to have something that looks like this. And so you can see that my head is hinged. I also balled up two little pieces of the paper mache and made eyes for it. And this is where the project gets a little bit messy. So you can go ahead if you'd like and put on rubber gloves. And of course we're using a washable paint, so if you don't have rubber gloves it's not a big deal. You can just go ahead and wash your hands up afterwards. And now I'm going to apply quite a liberal, liberal amount of paint onto our alligator. And because alligators vary in colors, you can go and do a little bit of research and look at all the different shades that will make up your alligator's body. I'm going to use a couple of different greens in there, give it a little bit of depth and squish it right down into the cracks. And then also I think that a little bit of black adds some depth to the alligator. We're going to go right in and we're going to mix all the colors. And it's good to start with your lightest colors first because you don't want to get too much of your dark black on your green brushes. And again, if you do, it's not a big deal because you can just go ahead, rinse them off and wash it up. So once you've painted all of the alligator, and you're going to let this part dry, and then you're going to make teeth. And again, I've just taken the little scraps of the egg carton and I've taken my scissors and I've cut a little tooth pattern into it. So you just need a, a nice length of this, maybe about two and a half to three inches. So you can just cut points all the way along and then use your opaque markers and color in the teeth. After it's all nice and white, this just glues easily into the mouth. And of course you would want to let your paint dry before you do this so that it's not quite as messy. So you can see how the teeth would fit around your alligator's mouth nicely. The opaque markers, you can also draw eyeballs on it. And if we look over at our finished project, you can see how I've also added nice detailed claws. You'll have a fun little alligator. Did you know that a turtle is actually a reptile? This turtle is so cute, but also he's very, very lightweight. His shell is a lot lighter because we've made it out of clay. Here's all the things that you'll need. We're starting out with a styrofoam egg. We're using tempera paint and also some brush paint. We're using an air dry clay. And then we have a piece of felt, our clay tools, and some glue, and then some basics. We have a plastic knife, toothpicks, a little hex bolt for this shape a chopstick, scissors, and a sponge brush. Okay, so the first step that we need to do is to prepare our egg. And this is going to be his shell. We want to cut off the bottom, 
and I'm going to work out here so I don't get my, uh, the flakes around on the table. And I'm just using a sawing motion using a plastic knife. When it's all done, I can squish them down onto the table and that'll round the edge. And if I rub along with the other edge, it'll take off any excess. So let's set that aside. Then the next thing I want to do is to work with my air dry clay. And this comes in two different colors. It's either a beige or a brown, kind of a terracotta. I'm going to lay that down, take my roller, and roll it out. And I've used about a half of a pack, which comes in like standard sizes. I've covered my work surface with uh, wax paper and taped it down so it doesn't move. And I'm going to lay that on top of my egg shape. Take that all the way down, turn it over. Now you can cover the bottom or you can leave it blank because then you could scoop this out and kind of put a surprise inside. So I'm going to turn that back over. Let's come back with my plastic knife and cut around the egg. It's kind of almost like uh, icing a cake or putting fondant around a cake. And I'll save that aside. And when you're putting this, remember this is air dry, so it's going to dry out, so you're going to want to keep it in plastic. So once I have the shape, then I'm going to come back with my bolt. If you take a look at this bolt, it's got that hexagon shape. And this is what I'm going to use to impress in and make the shape. This would be great, too. The same shape would be perfect to make a soccer ball, because that's at that unusual six-sided shape. And I go all the way around the entire surface. And then I'm ready to make the other parts of my turtle. And at home, you take your time and do all the way down. So I'll set that aside. Then the next step is to make our little arms and legs. So I've taken off and just broken off about four pieces here. And I'm going to form them in my hand, roll them out a little bit, and I'm going to create legs. Now usually they have a little bit heavier front and a little bit narrower towards the back. I'm going to stick a broken toothpick, just cut, break that in half in, and then I'm going to poke that right into my turtle. Now I'd go and do four, all four, two in the front and two in the back. I'm also going to take a little bit larger size, maybe about the size of oh, a walnut, and I'm going to make his head. I'll form that into a ball, and then pinch the other end out to form that face part. Again, I'm going to take a toothpick, and this one I'm going to take the full toothpick, poke that in, and then poke that into the front. Now, if I want to create any detail on these pieces, I can take a toothpick or a chopstick and etch right in. So I can do kind of his feet or his claws. I can create the eyes. Let's take the chopstick a little bit bigger and create this in. As you can see, I haven't pushed it all the way in. I've just made sure that I have a hole here and a hole there. Now, once you have all your pieces and parts, oh, and don't forget his tail which is just a little tiny section. All of these would be with um, pieces, then I'm going to, all of these was with the uh, toothpicks. All of these would be then set aside to dry overnight, at least 24 hours. When they come out, they're going to have this nice hard surface. It's almost like a porcelain, but it's so lightweight. The sticks are still in, and all of these, as they dry, they'll shrink away a little bit. Then I'm going to take my glue, put a dab of glue in, and poke that into the space, and, or into the, into the main. So I'm going to go through, do all of my pieces, and attach them all the way around. Now, rather than take the time to finish that, I'm going to just move this out of the side so you can see. Now I'm going to take my paint, and I'm starting out with tempera paint. I'll get my sponge brush, and I'm going to paint the surface of the turtle. Then I'll go through and paint all of the pieces and parts, get a nice, heavy, thick coat on. And you might want to do more than one coat. Now I've got one that's all painted here. Move this to the side and put a, slip his leg back on. 
And you can see he's all done. Now the last step I want to do is to take my brown and I'm, I'm using a squeeze brush and I'm going to brush this along the top just very lightly. Then I'm going to take a paper towel and if you need to, I'm going to just rub off the excess and if you need to, you can dampen that towel to take some off. Now let's take a look at the finished one. I have one last step. I've also cut a little circle of felt or an oval of felt on the bottom just so he doesn't scratch my surface or I can hollow out that inside and put a surprise inside. And that's our turtle. Our last project is a, another reptile and this one is a chameleon. So we're going to make a chameleon that you can switch the colors on. The, the items that we're going to need are uh, paints and a brush. We also have colored pencils. I'm using my sketching pencils, a permanent marker, and we'll need some transparency sheets and a piece of texture cardstock. I've also got one of these little rings that opens and closes easily and a hole punch. So to get started, we've got a pattern and I've printed it out onto a piece of paper. And then I've gone ahead and I've taken one of my soft leaded pencils and I've rubbed all along the back of it. And this is going to allow me to trace the picture of our lizard onto a sheet of our textured paper. Now I've cut these out to be approximately three and a half by eight inches and I've cut one piece of the textured paper and five transparencies out of that. So to transfer your pattern, we're just gonna center this on here. And because I have it on tracing paper, I can see right through to the back and know exactly where I'm transferring my image. So we'll trace all the way around this. And you do a nice job. Take your time. I'm going a little bit fast here. And we want to go all the way around his tail, which is what a chameleon uses to balance with, especially when they're up in the trees. I think I would need something to balance myself up there as well all the way around the loop and the curl, which is all chameleons have those, regardless of what kind they are. And it's little webbed feet. So you can see now, I've got the image of my chameleon on my page, on my piece of paper. So now we're gonna go ahead and take our permanent marker and we're gonna outline the chameleon. So you'll wanna go all the way around again to all of his pieces. And then our next step after this is that we want to trace the same image onto all of our transparency sheets. And to get the exact same image, you'll want to take even a little bit more time again and try to do a really good job of lining them up so that when we paint our transparencies, they'll line up nicely with your base image. So you can see that I've traced these ones on here. My other pattern was slightly different. So if I was going to do this one from scratch, I would want to trace each of the five transparencies with the chameleon. Now these transparency sheets have a rough side and a smooth side and you'll want to draw on the rough side of the sheets. So once we have all that done we're going to color our chameleon. So while you're doing your research you'll want to look and see what color a chameleon is before it changes color. And you'll see that as I push on my soft leaded pencils, the harder I push, the darker the color I get. And because of the texture on the paper, you can get some really nice effects with this. So you'll finish coloring that, add some detail. You can do light and dark greens. And when you're all done, you're gonna have something that looks like this. The next step, again, is to go back to our transparencies. And you can see, let's find one that lines up. There we go. So it's to go on the rough side again, and now we're going to use our paints that already have the brush in them, and we're going to paint. I'm gonna actually do a yellow because it looks so good against the green. So we'll just start the marker off by squeezing it lightly, and then carefully go all the way around inside of those lines. Because you used a permanent marker, the color isn't gonna run or go into your yellow. Once we're all done painting, we can do five different colors. So you can see that I did an orange, which is going to change my chameleon one color. We've got a nice blue. And you can choose any colors that you want. And as you're doing your research, you might see that there's specific colors that a chameleon changes. You'll also learn why they change colors, which has a lot to do with their habitat, as a little bit of a hint. So once all of the painting is done, set everything aside and let it dry thoroughly. Then we're going to line it all up again. 
set that guy aside. Now we want to punch a hole in this and we want to be a little bit careful with our hole because we want them to line up once they're on the ring so that they show up on top of it as we twist and turn. And so it's a good idea to possibly take a pencil and mark on your base first and then mark each of the transparencies, punch all the way through and do each one one at a time. So if we look over at our finished project, you can see how they're nicely lined up and as I slide each one over top of the base image, we have a wonderful colored chameleon. Don't forget to attach them all with your ring so you don't lose any pieces. And that's it for another hands-on show. We're ready to move on to animals without backbones and our first category is insects. There are more types of insects than any other type of animal. We'll meet a few favorites on the next hands-on. Projects from today's show plus other ideas are available on the web at craftsforkids.com. This is show 1207. Hands-On is sponsored in part by Elmer's Products, Inc. Manufacturers of a variety of adhesives, arts and crafts, and office products for use at home, school, or business for over 60 years. www.elmers.com Stadler Incorporated inspiring creativity for more than 150 years. Available wherever fine art and craft supplies are sold. www.stadler.us Hi, I'm Kathy Stahl, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. I hope you'll join us each week as we show you craft basics and great projects, each with five steps and five main ingredients. We have a lot of crafting fun in store for you. And remember what we all say at Hands-On Crafts for Kids, there's no right or wrong way, only your way. Be creative, have fun. We hope you'll join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Hi, I'm Kathy Stull, host of Hands-On Crafts for Kids. Our newest series is all about living things. We'll be crafting projects about mammals, amphibians, reptiles, insects, and more. All the projects have five steps and five main ingredients. Join us for Hands-On Crafts for Kids and be creative and have fun.